Here at Today, we always introduce Tim Russert as NBC's Washington bureau chief and moderator of Meet the Press. But for these folks, he was their mentor. NBC's Andrea Mitchell, Lisa Myers, David Gregory, Pete Williams, and Jim Mikoshevsky, and Steve Kappas is the president of NBC News. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. That, that Good morning. title, but we, we could recite it in our sleep, Washington Bureau <laughs> Chief and Moderator of Meet the Press. We've talked a little bit about his role as moderator of Meet the Press, but Steve, let me start with you. As Washington Bureau Chief, he was management. He was an administrator. What was he like in that capacity? <laughs> Just as he was on the air, this was a guy who was brilliant at what he did. And he was irreplaceable, Matt. I mean, you know what he did on the camera, but behind the, the scenes, he was such out. an influence in our opinion. news organization, in the saying, industry overall. Every day, he had the firm go. grasp, not only of the political world, but what was happening in his empire there in the Washington Bureau. A Andrea and Pete and David, just chime in here, which may be dangerous with all you guys just saying <laughs> chime in, but, but he, was your, he was your colleague. He was also, in many ways, your boss. What was he like as a boss? Well... If I may, I, I guess I knew Tim the longest. He was our boss, but he was never a suit, if I may, with uh, all due respect to Steve, our final boss. He taught us and had great joy for what he did. And every morning he would call and say, you know, what have you got? What have you got? Have you thought of doing it this way? But at the same time, he just was a cheerleader for everything that we did. He could not have been more supportive. He talked about us as the dream team. He had us all on Meet the Press, which was such a, an honor and privilege last week, his last Meet the Press. And we learned so much from him. But he was the most gentle man, a gentle giant, in that uh, today I walked in here and this small woman, a security guard, was in tears and said to me, Mr. Tim, Mr. Tim. And people throughout this building, throughout the world, are really mourning him. But the joy that he had in his work was unparalleled. You know, you mentioned that he called you guys the dream team. He cared a lot about the team, not only the on-camera team, but the behind-the-scenes team down there in Washington as bureau chief. I must have talked to him a dozen times over the last year, and, and I think it's well known that in broadcasting there's been some belt tightening of late, not only here at NBC <laughs> and other places. And Tim was very upset over the fact that he had to make some very difficult choices and some very deep cuts there in Washington, and it upset him immensely that he had to let some members of that team go, David and Pete. And I think it's fair to say, Matt, that if Tim hadn't been here, there'd probably have been more cuts. Uh, I owe everything to Timothy. He hired me here at NBC News, and I actually first dealt with him when I was still at the Pentagon. I can tell you he was the only bureau chief in Washington, D.C., who ever called me and asked me a substantive question about what we were doing in the government. And his interest in the specifics of government never stopped. And as Andrea said, I think it's important to emphasize, nobody here, nobody at NBC was ever prouder when we succeeded at something than Tim. You know, uh, David and, and, and Mick, um, it's a competitive business we're in. A and as bureau chief, he had the right to probably, probably bigfoot us all and go in and get the big stories and the big interviews, and yet he really si did seem, as, as Pete just said, to be proud when one of us got a chance at the big yeah. interview. You know, you know, Matt, when, uh, when Tim and Tom and, and later Brian would come in on a day like the State of the Union to come have lunch with the president, as the president does with the major anchors of, of the news divisions, Tim would always come back and brief us on what was said during those meetings, uh, off the record, but to share so that those of us who were on the beat would, would know uh, what we needed to know from a session like that. Um, and he, so he was generous, he made time to teach, uh, but he, he was always there. I mean, he was always on the phone. I mean, having covered the White House, and, and Mick and Andrew can talk about this as well, you know, he's on the phone saying, you know, what do you know, what do you know? And those hushed right. tones, <laughs> even though he's alone in his big <laughs> office, like, why is he talking so low? <laughs> yes. uh, because that was that yeah. training from the political world. It's like everything's on the QT. <laughs> but he, and you mentioned this before, Matt, I mean, he was such a resource. Yeah. You wanted to bounce ideas off him and say, hey, Tim, this is the th how I think I want to get at the president today. What do you think? And he'd help you refine it. And it always made you feel solid and, and that Dave, you were on his and, side and, and he David had your and, back. And, and Mick and, and the rest of you chime in on this as well. When you'd call Tim and use him as a resource before a major interview and he would suggest a question, you go out and do the interview, let's say it was with the president, and if that question received the most attention of anything that happened in the interview, not once would he ever claim responsibility or take the credit. Ever. Matt, 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 how many people go to work and absolutely dread the phone call from their boss? 
with Tim, that was the high point of your day. You know, his, his intellectual curiosity and enthusiasm, childlike almost, was infectious. And although he set the standard, the bar, very high for every one of us, he would not hesitate to reach down and help you get over that bar. And, and, and I think that's what I will miss about Tim I, the most. I'm curious. He had such high standards for himself and demanded so much of the people who worked for him and around him. Did any of you ever run afoul of him? <laughs> yeah, if he, uh, how if much he, time do we have? <laughs> if he came to your office door and he said, what happened? You knew that you had screwed up. But he was just amazingly generous, and he made us all better. You could go to Tim Russert with any story, and he didn't care who it helped, who it hurt, what the politics of it were. All he cared about was that we got it right. And he would spend endless hours working with you, using his own sources, helping you shape it, navigating the treacherous shoals of Washington until you got that piece on the air. Right. He had a passion for the truth. And I think sometimes, Matt, that passion for the truth would, mis would be misinterpreted because occasionally he would seem to be coming out of his chair when he was doing an interview or asking a debate question. Well, well that's a good point, Lisa, and I want to bring it back to Steve here because while well, everyone in the last 24 hours is saying tough and fair, there was some criticism leveled at Tim following a February debate where some, in Cleveland where some people thought he was too tough on Hillary Clinton. And I'm curious, did you talk to Tim after that criticism started being leveled against him, and what were his thoughts on it? You know, Matt, w uh, Tim and I spoke every day, and everybody had a passionate feeling about the work that Tim did. Uh, in, in that particular case, he felt so very strongly that, that he had this been fair and, and tough. And that's what he wanted to do every Sunday morning. And he approached all of this with such a great humanity that I think even when those little blips would come up, everything would be taken care of because Tim prepared and Tim did his homework. Tim knew what he was doing every time he sat down in that chair. And he approached these people with such a great respect that it that, that outweighed everything that he did. Yeah, the evidence prop. Go ahead. I just wanted to add something. We're talking about the professional, and it's so important how we'd interact with him professionally. But I just think it's also worth pointing out something you've discussed and you know firsthand. You know, if I would go into his office and say, hey, boss, you know, I just wanted to drop by and talk about something. You know, you could tell you'd be working on various things. If you want to talk politics, that's fine. But if, if I wanted to talk about my son, my big boy Max, uh, he would just stop. He'd say, ah, the Max man, what's yeah. he up to? Uh, and we had stories to share, and then he would tell very detailed stories, uh, as you mentioned, uh, about Luke. But that's where he taught a lot as well, because he felt that it was so important to demonstrate the kind of life that he had led as a father, that his father so had true. led for him. And he took that time to teach and to be so genuine and authentic. And, you know, my wife said last night as we were talking about this, you know, it matters. It's such an important lesson for young people, for our children and for other people's children. It matters that you live a life of integrity and that you achieve such standards in your professional life and in your, in your personal life. And he really did le lead that life. And he, and he taught so many through that life. And that's, uh, I think, the most profound legacy that he'll leave. And Matt, the, the, the thing I learned most from Tim that I will never forget, when we first met, we shared stories about our, our uh, blue collar roots in Buffalo and, and Milwaukee. And he told me, never forget where you came from and you when Tim did a story when he did an interview he was doing that story and interview for those sanitation workers in Buffalo well as his dad That's used to say was his dad used to, to say Tim. don't forget talk to me don't worry about the others talk to right. me all right it's, guys right. Andrea Mitchell David Gregory Lisa Myers Jim Mikoshevsky Pete Steve